clearly uh, in your work, in, in your book, and, and also in your, in your writing, um, you are very opposed to the expansion of the carceral state, uh, opposed to mass incarceration. Um, you know, you, I, your whole book is about how we can better avoid kind of these, these law and order backlashes or these moral panics, right? Um, but, you know, something sure. that has come up, uh, which I mentioned earlier, is that we are seeing a violent crime wave right now. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I want to bring this up with you because I actually don't know what to make of it. Um, I know that a lot of progressive politicians uh, are worried about, you know, about Republicans leaning into the crime wave, which clearly they have done, and right. and fomenting another moral panic, right? Um, I know that AOC in particular has called some of the, you know, worries over crime a moral panic. She she did use that term. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, like I do think that we need to take the issue of crime seriously because as we've seen, it is it does seem to be motivating many particularly working class voters. So uh, this is a big question and I think it'll be our last one for you, but is there some way that the left can respond to kind of this problem of rising violent crime in particular and not just sweeping it under the rug as Republican scaremongering, but at the same time, you know, not grease the wheels for a moral panic? Well, the first thing I would say is to stop dismissing the, you know, concerns. A 30% mm -hmm. spike in homicides nationwide is in one year. I've looked at these figures, uh, you know, I, I've, I've looked at the figures that we have, and that is an unprecedented increase. That's not, a, that's not, it used to take, even in the roaring 70s, when crime was on a wild upswing, right? It used to take, you know, two, three, four years to reach a 30% uh, spike in, in homicide rates. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a real increase. As you suggested also in your in your talk earlier, right? Um, it's hard to know whether Asian Americans are singled out. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like it might be simply an effect of the spiking homicide rates in mm -hmm. especially cities overall and spikes in violent crime and for a variety of reasons, reporters and activists and so on have have focused on, I mean, on, on mm -hmm. the Asian victims. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like we need better, you know, we need better data. But 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 the uh, the first thing I would say, you know, don't you don't dismiss that. It, it'll it'll bite you in the ass if you dismiss it. Right? I mean, uh, uh, left activists dismissed concerns over crime to some extent in the late 60s and early 70s. And um, the results were quite bad. The results were that uh, conservatives got mastery of the discourse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas liberals and progressives and social democrats had argued for a rehabilitative approach to criminal justice that would put as few people as possible in prison, that would let them out as quickly as possible, that would be focused on their reintegration into society and so on, right? Uh, there was, there, that was, the, that was the, the Johnson administration agenda, basically, right? Um, the conservatives always had one approach to crime, put the bad man in jail and keep him there for as long as possible so that he can't do it again. And, and that was the argument that won in the court of public opinion, it won in the court of, of, of uh, administrative circles. And you can actually see when it gels, it's 1973, 1974, when this review piece comes out uh, on the heels of an American Friends Service Committee report, which says basically, fuck you. <laughs> Um, you shouldn't put anybody in jail and, and like the system is fucked. And, uh, and I'm, I'm exaggerating slightly. The, the, the American Friends Service Committee report was, 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 was actually more significant than that. It, it said that the system wasn't working and that the, the, uh, uh, instead of rehabilitating the, the, the person who had violated the law, 
we should rehabilitate the system, we should rehabilitate society. It's a complicated argument to make. Um, but it, it sort of opens the gate for saying that the system isn't working. And then, then comes this article called What Works, which concludes basically that nothing is working, that nothing has worked, that none of the reforms worked, that we're easing ourselves into a maelstrom of, of criminal victimization, and that the only sound course, literally, literally, is to lock the bad men up and keep them there. To, to incapacitate, to incapacitate offenders. Um, um, so we're, you know, I don't think we're there. Like, I don't think we're, we're not there where we replay that dynamic quite yet. Um, it might be good if some of my allies would, would, would stop uh, pretending that there isn't a a crime problem. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we were, we benefited from a long decline in crime rates of all sports, especially violent crimes, which are the, you know, the crimes people really most care about mm -hmm. are, are the violent crimes. And if you, you know, you start in the seven, in the, in the nineties, uh, they go down, 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 down. Um, that changed a bit in the last two or three years, you get, Figures vacillating a bit, and you had a you had that large increase in in um, in, uh, in homicides uh, last year. Um, how do we form a politics around this? Uh, it's a challenge because I don't think you know we on the left are all on the same page. You have some people calling for abolition of police, abolition of prison, and, and uh, you know, basically an, an agenda for simply not, not overhauling the system or reforming it or bringing it into alignment with the norms of other <laughs> developed industrialized democracies, but, but actually, you know, going down a, a path that very few people can tell you much about or what mm -hmm. what will look like or what institutions would take care of these problems and and the honest abolitionists seems to me are all all basically have a backdoor mechanism for, for having prisons back in the system right they they you know they they'll acknowledge that sometimes you have to separate they carefully used word right they have you have to separate recidivistic violent people from society until you can fix them. Um, so I, how do we do this? I don't know. Um, it would be, but it, I, I would say this, it, it would be a great venture, a great experiment for the left to take on criminal justice as a display, as, as you know, this is what socialism can do, this, or this is what social democracy can do, or this is, what, this is what you can do if you have sound planning, economic redistribution, if you have um, a sound system that is empathic to the suffering of criminal victims, but also tries to understand the, the situation of the, of the person who broke the law as well. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't think we're all together that far away from being able to develop a position like that. If you clear out a lot of the noise, um, maybe, you know, maybe we could, it would look it would look something like Northern Europe, which has um, what um, very low prison rates. They don't have they don't especially have lower crime rates than the U.S. This is interesting. Hmm. They they have lower homicide rates. They don't have necessarily much lower crime rates, but they deal with all of this with far more humane institutions and just practices. They incarcerate something like 70 people per 100,000, not 700 
50 per 100,000, like in the US. I think we're down to 700 now, actually. Um, but we're still 10 times ahead of, of what incarceration rates look like in, um, in Northern Europe. And I, you know, um, so there, that would be, that would be a, a, a decent agenda. And it might, you know, if you, if you could sell it to working class people um, in a way that wasn't patronizing or demeaning and, and um, struck people as fair, mm -hmm. um, I, I suspect it would be a, you know, it would be a vote getter. It would be a way forward for the left. If you like this video from The Jacobin Show, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks.